Okay, this book is called Christ as Satisfaction, The Reality of Sanctification, and it's by David Benjamin. It is available by ebook uh, that you can download for free um, at christiansneedthegospel.com, or you can get the paperback, um, and you can go to the website, and it'll explain everything there. I think this is going to be awesome, and I'm looking forward to starting it. And I pray it blesses you. And it is dedicated to the beaten sheep. Our problem is one of hunger and thirst. Here is the situation of a Christian. On the one hand, I have a desire that corresponds with the things of God. On the other hand, those desires are only fulfilled by Christ himself. Amen. He is the righteousness that the law points to. Romans 3.21. Amen. The commandment says you should live this way. And I am judged because I do not. I might try something, or excuse me, I might try sometimes and have some success. But my conscience knows that if I break the law at one point, I'm guilty of the whole. And I get tired of telling God I'm sorry. And asking him to forgive me of the same thing again and again. Amen. When we are looking to ourselves for righteousness and sanctification rather than Christ, we live in a terrible tension. We still have the raging desires in the flesh along with our desire to be holy. When we give into sin, we are miserable. When we crawl back to God repenting, we are miserable. There is no satisfaction in this tension. But what is driven but what is driving the tension? It is a longing to be satisfied. Amen. Our desire for holiness, excuse me, our desire for holiness is actually a hunger and a thirst to be satisfied with Christ. Amen. When he satisfies us, he gives us rest. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Rest is a deliverance from this terrible tension between my desire for holiness and my desire for other things that are at war. The only way the tension is resolved is to be satisfied with Christ. Amen. In the scriptures, and in John especially, Christ presents himself as food and drink for our satisfaction. Amen. We need to learn to eat of him. Our desire for holiness is fulfilled because he quenches our thirst. But he, excuse me, but he also subdues our desire for sin because he satisfies us. Amen. John 4, 13 through 14. Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give them or give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. John seven thirty seven and 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. If you don't have Christ satisfying your hunger and thirst, then you will hunger and thirst for other things. Because of your hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll try by the law or by some mystical practice to fulfill those desires and subdue your sinful desires. The problem is that only Christ can fulfill the desire for righteousness. Furthermore, the law of sin in your members is stronger than you. Amen. You cannot quench the hunger and thirst for Christ just by willing or excuse me, just by wiling to be godly. And you cannot quench your hunger and thirst 
for sinful things just by obtaining, or excuse me, abstaining from them. Amen. Romans 7, 21 through 23. I find that a law, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Amen. The Romans 7 dilemma is that of a person who has been awakened to righteousness, delights in its according to his inner man, but is a slave to sin. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans seven twenty four, Amen. People who pursue anything other than Christ is quenching, or excuse me, people who pursue anything other than Christ to quench their thirst, satisfy them, and be their life and their holiness, end up having by the flesh and its strength to try to deal with the less. One person described it as torture. He said he was having a problem with his teaching. And he said, you're saying I can do whatever I want. I'm torturing myself. I'm torturing myself here, not giving in to these desires that are raging in me. You're telling me these last few years of torturing myself to not do these things is in vain. I said, no, the fact that you are torturing yourself to not do these things shows me that your hunger and thirst have not been satisfied. You need to drink the living water. Amen. At that time, I was teaching Christ as nourishment versus commandments and law, or excuse me, and the letter, let me start that over. At that time, I was teaching Christ as nourishment versus commandments and letter and law keeping. Law keeping is knowing God has a standard and wanting to ful fulfill it. A law keeper will try to say no to the desires, but the desires are still there. Amen. Whew. This was the dilemma of the children of Israel in the wilderness. The children of Israel had been delivered from Egypt. However, they had not been brought into the good land where the riches were abundantly available to satisfy their hunger and thirst. Amen. They were in the wilderness where all they had was manna. They were hungering, or excuse me, they were yeah, hungering and thirsting for the leeks and onions in Egypt. Numbers 11.5. Amen. That is a terrible place to be. That's where most Christian, excuse me, that's where most people are in their Christian life. This is especially the case in anything other than Christ is if uh, if anything other than Christ is presented as the reality of sanctification. Amen.